Uh, and welcome to our next session. I would like to also welcome our speaker, Jiří Pavela, and uh, uh, from the uh, Faculty of Information Technology at uh, Brno University of Technology. And his topic called uh, Perun, keep your project performance under control. So without any further delay, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much for the nice introduction. Uh, maybe first of all, can you hear me in the in the, yeah, back rows. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, today I would like to introduce you to a my to my research and a tool that me and my colleagues at Brno University of Technology are currently developing. Uh, I'm a PhD student at Brno University of Technology, and my uh, area of focus is efficient performance analysis and testing, both static and dynamic. And Perun is a tool that basically uh, kick-started this interest and it has been developed or, or is being developed uh, throughout several years already. So first of all, I would really like to thank uh, Red Hat for uh, sponsoring this research financially. So let me start with some brief motivation why you should care about your software's performance or why we should perhaps all care about it. So. Uh, software performance bugs are an omnipresent problem. Uh, they are with us basically in pretty much every software. So just some horror story examples. Uh, your favorite cluster computing engine might freeze just after an update, which actually happened for Apache Spark uh, after one of the major updates. Uh, or maybe some of you have heard about the famous outage of Stack Overflow. Uh, which was actually because of a performance issue or performance bug. It cost more than half an hour outage, which is, as you can imagine, a lot of money. And another example might be that parsers, when implemented inefficiently, can actually uh, cause some severe slowdown. So you might think, oh, those are some horror stories. This cannot happen in my team, in my project. Right? This is just, I'm not, in, I'm not working in such a big company or something. So maybe some more examples, which might be more relatable to your day-to-day -day work as a developer or student. So for example, uh, if you choose an inefficient algorithm, uh, your favorite compiler might run out of memory, which happened for the C-sharp compiler because of uh, an inefficient quadratic complexity implementation of a C-sharp constant folding of strings. Another example might be some pattern matching algorithms, right? I guess you all know or like uh, regular expressions. So if you implement or if you uh, create a regex and uh, use an inefficient regex matching engine, you might actually consume the majority of your CPU time just uh, matching those patterns. Or if you like Wim and you use and, and you perform some searches for tags, uh, an inefficient implementation or inefficient data structure might cause you to wait a bit longer than you would like. Uh, or if you like generating documentation from your source code, uh, some inefficient parsing also might cause you to uh, spend more and more time generating the documentation, which is, I presume, not something you would like to. So I hope I've convinced you that uh, performance issues are uh, or that you should probably care about performance, that performance issues happen, and they probably happen to you, that they probably will happen to you. So now that we're hopefully, we, we hopefully all agree that performance is important, uh, what should we do about it, right? So the easiest thing would be to find the performance bugs or performance issues as fast as you can, right? Preferably right after you uh, release or, or you have a new uh, software or, or new version of your software. So there has actually been a study conducted uh, regarding dormant bugs, which are bugs that might be in your code base for years and months before they're discovered, uh, sometimes with some catastrophic uh, consequences. So the study basically found out that if you have uh, recently introduced bugs, they take less time to fix, they require less experienced developers to fix them, and the fix is generally smaller, right? So if you find bugs real fast, 
preferably right after you push your commit or your uh, PR, uh, the cost for your company will be much lower than if the bug is found, let's say, two, three years down the road. So, yeah, the, the simple solution is to find bugs as fast as possible, right? And that's something we've been actually doing, which is handled by continuous integration and automated testing, which became, I would say, industry standard, is used pretty frequently for functionality testing, right? For your functional bugs, this is what you usually do to discover them quickly. But what about performance bugs, right? Uh, you might develop some tool, some framework, some utility script or some tests that uh, target performance. But those solutions are mostly ad hoc or proprietary. So they're not, to the best of our knowledge, not complex enough and not open source, right? So meet Perun, performance version system that tries to tackle this issue. Uh, we like to call Perun a complex solution for performance analysis and testing. Okay, that's a lot of lo lot to unpack here, right? So what does it mean? What do we mean by complex solution? It means that Perun is able to collect performance data, which is basically the thing you do uh, when you profile your software. Uh, it also creates performance models, right? So some representation of the performance you've measured. It integrates version control systems such as Git to access the full project history. It detects performance changes across your different versions uh, of your software, such as, you know, you release a new version and there's a severe degradation, Perun is able to find it. And it also visualizes the performance, right? It, it's much easier for us as humans to understand some results if we see it in a picture. Uh, just a small note, collecting performance data is not always, but usually the only thing that traditional profilers do, right? If you think of Colgrind uh, and such tools, they usually just give you the data, maybe some summaries, but they don't offer a complex solution for your performance problems. So how does Perun actually work? Uh, I'd like to present it on a, a bit simplified overview of its workflow that consists of four major steps that are repository, profiles, models, and detection. So here you can see the whole picture. I will try to break it down and describe each part separately. So you have your project. That project is basically some working directory, right? This is the directory where your code lives, where your configuration files and so on can be found. You very likely use a version control system such as Git to uh, s manage your versions and contributions. And on top of that, you might also consider initializing or using Perun in this very working directory, S very similarly to how Git is initialized or used in your typical uh, repository. So now that you have the version control system and Perun in your working directory, you might want to measure your project's performance and obtain something called profiles, right? This is basically a file that contains some performance metrics regarding uh, your software uh, based on the inputs uh, you tested on. Uh, nice feature of Perun is that the profiles are actually stored within its, let's say, database, not, not exactly, but some, some structure that keeps those profiles linked to corresponding uh, version control system versions, right? So if you have a commit with some hash, uh, Perun actually associates some profiles with this hash if, they were, if the profiles were collected while your project was in that version, right? Or if it, when it was the head version. So when you have profile, you maybe want to uh, obtain some performance models based on, those, on this profile, right? So profile is just some structured data, perhaps compressed binary, uh, that contains a lot of performance information, which isn't really something you would like to parse, let's say, manually as a human. So you might want to construct some models that uh, help you understand the data better. And models are actually also stored within Perun, uh, let's say, alongside the profiles. So models sounds a bit maybe too abstract, uh, hard to imagine, so maybe an example might help. So models are basically mathematical functions that are based on the input size of your function or, or your program, 
or perhaps some statistical summaries regarding the main performance features of your profile, right? So for example, take regression analysis, which is uh, one of our, uh, let's say, post-processors that generate some models. So here you can see some red dots. Those are basically the performance data you've collected uh, in your profile, right? They describe some, uh, some behavior of your function uh, with respect to time and uh, size of a structure that the function is operating on. And those curves you see right there, those are basically the functions that regression analysis tries to fit your data with. So it's a bit messy. So what you usually want to have is the best model that describes that best fit your data, right? So using regression analysis, you can find out that the best model that fits your data is linear. Right? It, it doesn't mean the function has linear complexity. It just means that it behaves li linearly based on the input you gave it. Right? And you do that using some statistical, let's say, uh, coefficients that help you understand which models fit your data best. So as you can imagine, uh, understanding this large cluster of data points might not be the easiest thing, right? But instead, if you know that the function is behaving lin linearly, it's much easier to uh, imagine it than to see, uh, I don't know, 2,000 uh, points plotted in your graph. So the next step of the workflow is the detection phase, where you basically take, take your models that you created or directly profiles and compare them. Right, so we call the actual or the current version of your profile or of your project the target version, and the version you're comparing to we call baseline. Right, so you basically take the baseline models or profiles out of the parent repository, and using some oracle, some magical algorithms, uh, you compare it with the, your current version models and you obtain some result, right? Like there are some performance degradations perhaps, or there was no change, which is usually what you like to see, uh, or perhaps even you managed to optimize something even a bit more, right? So you take profiles or models of two versions, you compare them and you get the result, right? Like, yeah, my new release is 10% slower. That's something I should maybe uh, care about or try to fix. Uh, Again, a small example of the detection algorithms, I've called them oracles, which is, uh, I guess, the easiest thing to uh, just take it as a, some black box that gives you a result. But just as a small example of one of the detection algorithms that we've implemented is something we call exclusive time outliers. Uh, let me start with what exclusive time is. Perhaps if you've profiled before, you might have encountered this term or maybe the term self, which in this context usually means that the time uh, that your function took, the, the duration of your function is uh, basically the time that you spent exclusively in the function without any call ease, right? So if you have a function f, which calls function g, the exclusive times regards only the function f, not the called function g. So we basically take this exclusive time for all functions and we compute the deltas compared to the previous version for that function, right? So you have two versions, you have many functions in both of those versions, you check the time of, or how long those functions took in previous version, in the current version, you compute the delta, and then using some statistical approaches for identifying outliers, you create a hierarchy of uh, different severity issues, right? So. For example, in our implementation or in our algorithm, if you identify some outlier using the modified z-score, uh, it's usually the most severe degradation or perhaps optimization. Okay, so uh, enough with the theory. Theory, You might want to see how Perun might actually uh, help you in your day-to-day -day work. Uh, so let's let me show you that on an example uh, where we try to find performance changes across different versions. 
So many of you perhaps know the CPython project, which is a reference C implementation of a Python interpreter. Uh, recently, there has been a performance issue reported by one of the users on GitHub, which basically uh, stated that there's a 8% higher function call overhead compared to the previous stable release, right? So you have some alpha release and the function call overhead is 8% higher, which doesn't sound like a lot, but if you use this function a lot, your program might get slower by 10%, which might uh, be important enough. And the problem was in one of its modules, uh, namely the C types module. Uh, the issue could be replicated using the PyPerformance C-type benchmark, so it can be replicated easily. And it was fixed quite soon after the report, right? So problem solved. Why would we need another tool to help us? Well, the hard part is usually discovering the issue and finding the root cause of the performance issue, right? Even identifying that there's some problem, which might be in a module that your tests aren't really covering that much. And it often requires quite significant manual effort uh, by the developers, which costs money and time. So Perun tries to help with this task and help developers solving those issues. And Perun does it by utilizing recency and past profiling, right? Those, the repository of profiles across your project versions. So how could we perhaps identify or find this issue and also find its root cause using Perun? So first of all, you have to have the CPython repository. You initialize Perun in that repository. And we assume that you already have a profile for the previous release, right? You're continuously using Perun across your uh, development cycle. So you already have a profile for the release, uh, for the 3.10 release. And we will call this profile baseline. Uh, just a s small note, as I've already said, the profiles are linked to the different project versions internally. So new version rolls out, right? It's the alpha version. And you want to profile that version to see if there are some issues. So you use the C-types -type, C benchmark for the new version. Uh, there's some simplified command which can be used to profile it. In reality, it's a bit more uh, complicated, but not that much more. And we will denote the new profile target, right? And now we want to compare the baseline and the target to see if there are some issues, perhaps. So as I said, we support multiple comparison algorithms. And for this particular issue, we use the exclusive time outliers that I briefly introduced before. So these are the results of the comparison. So the first thing you might notice is the 9% slowdown, which roughly corresponds to the reported uh, slowdown in the GitHub issue. And those are the two most contributing functions, or the two functions that contribute the most to the slowdown, right? So now we've already discovered there's some issue. There's some roughly 9% degradation. And we also know which functions are responsible for this slowdown. So all that remains is to check those functions. And lo and behold, we find that there's a bug in the implementation, right? You have a if, which is checking some flag, asking if we've already completed the initialization. And if not, we will perform the initialization. The problem is that the flag is never set to true, right? So we initialize over and over again. So now we know the issue. We create new hotfix or a new hotfix branch with the fix. Here you can see the, the simple fix. Uh, you profile your new version with the hotfix again to obtain a profile called hotfix. Now you compare the baseline and the hotfix to see if the issue has been already fixed or if your fix actually solved the performance issue. And OK, this table might be a bit more confusing, so let's break it down. So there are basically some old deltas which refer to the previous comparison of our target and baseline. And here you can see the 9% the degradation. Here you can see it in, in absolute terms in, in the time that it took uh, compared to the, or, or 
how much more time it took compared to the previous stable version. And in those black columns, you can see that the new degradation after the hotfix is only around 2%, right? So it, there's still some small degradation, but the important part is that the two functions that contributed the most seem to be fixed now, right? So their relative change to their previous runtime is sub 0.1%, which is good, right? That's something you want to see, especially since uh, the problem was because of a bug introduced during refactor, right? Or re refactoring of your code. So uh, you would, you'd expect that the performance will stay roughly the same. Okay, so what have we learned? We've learned that Perun leverages version control systems and the recency principle to successfully discover and help the developers find performance issues and perhaps even guide them to the possible root cause uh, of the problem. Okay, so that was one of the demonstrations prepared for, uh, or, or demonstrations of Perun. So I have, I have a second one, uh, which relates to generating, let's say, some interesting workloads for your pro program, right? So the problem of testing or performance testing is finding the right inputs uh, to test your program with. So recall this stack over overflow issue I've been talking about before. Maybe just a quick survey. Have some of you heard about the issue before this talk? Did, did you notice it, I don't know, a few years earlier or, uh, or when, it was re when it was recently found out? Okay. So maybe some more details. The offending regular expression that caused the outage was this one, right? So let me break it down a bit. Uh, there is some regular expression that is matching uh, spaces or white spaces or their uh, Unicode equivalent from the start of the line, or they're basically matching or they're trying to find some white space characters at the end of the line. Uh, the regular expression was used for trimming white spaces, right? So you have some file and there's some, tr let's say, trailing white spaces, you want to get rid of them. So the problem is that when you use an inefficient or let's say uh, a bit more simpler uh, regular expression matching engine, you might encounter extensive backtracking. The issue was actually uh, in one user's uh, post that contained 20,000 of those white spaces, which were not at the end or at the start of the line. So the engine was basically backtracking around, I don't know, 200 million times, which is a lot, right? So can Prune somehow help with detecting this issue before it becomes a catastrophe and uh, basically uh, kills your servers for half an hour? Well, we have some module or some tool that's called Perun's Performance Fuzzing. It's based on a uh, previously or originally uh, proposed principle of performance fuzzing, but we've added some more uh, things to that. So maybe just a quick introduction, since uh, perhaps you hear the term for the first time. So fuzzing is a form of fault injection stress testing. That might not have helped a lot, so let me break it down. It means that you generate some inputs preferably malformed or invalid inputs, and then you feed them to your program. And what you expect is to find at least some inputs that cause some unexpected crashes or maybe errors in your program, right? If you're parsing, if, you, if you're writing parsers, um, you might want to find some inputs that get, let's say, into some corner cases that you haven't tested properly and maybe kill your program or cause it to crash or to, uh, let's say, get into some uh, inconsistent state, right? So your goal is to find some inputs that will cause your program to behave incorrectly. So Perun's fuzzer builds on this principle, but is profiling guided. What does it mean? It means that we do not care about crashes or errors. We care about slowdown, right? So you want to find inputs that cause your program to slow down signific significantly. And to find this out, you need to check those inputs by profiling, right? So you generate, I don't know, million, two million, ten millions of inputs, and some of them 
might cause your program to run 10 or 20 times slower, right? So those are the inputs you're interested in because they definitely triggered some edge cases or some corner cases of your program. And the goal is to find those inputs that cause such severe slowdown. Just as a side note, uh, in some of our experiments, we were, also, we were actually able to find inputs that caused several hours uh, or slow down in the range of several hours, right? So if the original program ran for like half a second, we were able to generate inputs, which were not that much bigger than the original one uh, that caused it to basically hang almost, let's say, forever for a normal user, right? So can we actually uh, find the stack overflow issue using our fuzzer? Well, we will use this following settings for our experiment. We will have a small C++ program, which is tr trying or which is using the regex search function. That was the culprit of the problem. We will have a seed. Seed is an input that your fuzzer is basically using to generate the malformed inputs. So there's like a 150 line of code implementation of parallel grep that you will use, uh, that we, we used as a seed. And there are some unique mutation rules implemented in Perun, and one of them, particularly interesting in this case, is basically inserting white spaces uh, to a random position in a string, right? So that's what will trigger the issue. And to keep it fair, we've, uh, we chose to keep the inputs relatively small so that they, they may relate to the size of the input you would probably expect your uh, regex to be matching on. So here we have the, the results, right? So you can see that for the seed, which was the, the small C implementation of a parallel grab, which has around 3,500 uh, 3, uh, bytes, around 150 lines, it took, well, 0 0.1 second, right? When we tried our fuzzer, after several hours, we identified two inputs that caused it to slow down severely, right? So you can see around 16 times slowdown. That doesn't seem too much, right? But maybe notice that the size of the input is almost the same as the original seed, right? So you have pretty much or close to the same uh, sized input, but it will run 16 times slower. Or the second one, right? Almost 30 times slower just for 10,000 bytes, right? 10,000 characters and it's already running for two and a half seconds. That's a lot, I'd say. If you get an input which has million li millions of lines, you might never be able to uh, reach the end. So Perun Fuzzer can force potential performance issues to manifest, right? You have a code which is working fine until you scale it or until you reuse it in some other module. So this is something that fuzzing or performance fuzzing might help you with. It might find the issues that are not issues yet, that are only potential issues. Um, just as a side note, uh, we're using different mutation strategies based on the type of the input you supply it to. So if you use text files, there are some different mutation rules. If you use binary files, there are again some different mutation rules. There's also support for domain-specific rules. If you have some format of your input, you can uh, develop your own rules, mutation rules, that are likely to uh, cause trouble. And that's basically it. So just to summarize, we are able to uh, find some, some existing performance issues that manifested in a new version of your software. And we're also able to identify potential issues that might cause trouble if you don't fix it. So something about our ongoing and future work uh, regarding Perun. So one of our main uh, focus is on increasing granularity of the profiling, right? So instead of measuring functions and their duration, we would also like to measure the duration of each basic block within your function, right? Why is it important? It helps you to pinpoint the exact or almost exact uh, root of your issue, right? So if you know that the problem happened in a specific basic block, you know which lines you should check for the potential issue, right? So there's just a visualization of, of uh, the preliminary results, I'd say, where you can see that 
one function is behaving uh, or is taking much more time than the other functions in your program. And you can also see which basic block it is, right? There's only one, so that's pretty easy. But if you have some more, uh, let's say, elaborate functions, you might find out that some of your basic blocks are taking much more time than you would perhaps expect. The second area of our interest is increasing the profiling precision, right? So instead of just monitoring the runtime of your functions, we would also like to uh, relate it to the parameter values you supply it, right? So for example here, you can see that uh, how your function behaves with certain inputs. And third field we are trying to uh, tackle in our work is to increase profiling efficiency. If you've ever profiled and used a event-based or yeah, event-based profiler, you might have noticed that your pro program is running, I don't know, 100 times slower than, you know, it, than it usually does. So we try to speed up the process of profiling and to profile only functions that are important, right? So what are important functions? That's something that's hard to uh, pinpoint precisely but we are developing some, heuristic, some heuristics or some, uh, uh, let's say, approaches that might help you identify those functions. The core challenge is achieving sufficient precision, right? So if you profile only uh, one-tenth of, of, of your functions in your program, uh, the precision might be quite low. So this is the main challenge. Fully profiling the important functions so that you get the information you need while not spending your whole afternoon profiling your tool or your program. Something about our future work. So we're currently focused mainly on C, C++ programs, but we already have some students that are working on uh, you know, some extensions for C Sharp or Java. Uh, we would also like to measure more performance metrics than just duration. We have some experimental stage for memory profile consumption or memory consumption profiler and one of our students is currently working on uh, tracking energy consumption of software which is a quite hard task and we would also like to support more state-of-the-art or well-established uh, tools that exist uh, currently we have some Facebook infer plugins or uh, lupus and we would also like to support Valgrind tool suite perf gprof and so on and uh, lastly, we would also like to perform some more elaborate performance analysis of dynamic data structures, which is usually, uh, not usually, but it's quite often the problem uh, or the performance issue of your program that you choose some inefficient uh, dynamic data structures for your task, right? So to conclude, Perun is a complex performance analysis and testing solution. What does it mean? It integrates VCS, it collects performance data, it derives performance models based on those profiles or the performance data. It detects performance changes across your versions of across the versions of your project, and it visualizes the performance. Right throughout the slides, you could see some visualizations that were used uh, during uh, some of the module or some of the analysis. So it's not just mere profiling, right? That, that's the key takeaway. It's not just a profiler; it's a complex tool suite. Um, We've shown, or I've shown two examples of how you can use Perun. One, was, uh, one example was how to detect a new performance degradations in your code, in your new versions, your, in your new release. And also how to find out that your program has some potential issues that might manifest later. And in our ongoing and future work, we would like to increase the granularity, the precision and the efficiency uh, of profiling and also support more languages, more metrics, and, some, and incorporating some existing tools that users are quite used to in their day-to-day -day work. So that's all for me. Thank you very much for the attention, and I'm more than happy to take your questions now. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so if you don't mind, I'm gonna start with a question. So, uh, can Perun go back in time sure. in BCS? So, so what I mean by that, of course, create baseline somewhere you know, back in time and mm -hmm. uh, compare with my current version. Okay, uh, wait, sorry, so what, what was the question yeah, again? The question is, uh, like you said, okay, mm -hmm. let's say I learned about Perun 
right now. I want to use it on my project. I want to mm -hmm. see if I'm going the right direction with some sort okay. of a function. Yeah. So I, I just say, okay, start with, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, I understand. Version back in time somewhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So when you uh, when you use Perun, you can actually choose to uh, retrospectively measure the performance of your program, right? So it basically traverses your history or the history of your project and performs the profiling and uh, deriving of models in all those versions that you select, right? So you're two years in your development and you want to check if, uh, you want to find some baseline, right? So you, you say, yeah, let's measure those 10 previous versions. So you create some configuration for that, you run it and it basically collects all those data for all those versions. So you can retrospectively check if there was perhaps some creeping degradation. Great, thank you. Any more questions from the audience? Hello. Um, so, is Perun just a tool, or do you also provide a service that I can hook up to my GitHub repo and mm -hmm. just tell, hey, do it. Do it. I yeah, don't understand yeah. what you are doing, but do it. Yeah. So, so yeah, right. So the question is, how can I actually use it, right? So currently, uh, there's been a work of one of my colleague that is working on some. On a, on a tool that allows you to run analyzers and tools uh, externally on one of your servers, right? So we have an interface for that tool. So you can set up Perun in some remote server and then basically use this interface to check it regularly, right? So for, let's say for each new commit, new each, uh, new e each new release or pull request. So it's, as of right now, it's not directly, uh, let's say, in, integrated into GitHub Actions or something like that, or, or the most established CI platforms, but it's one of our future work that we really plan to address, right? So for now, we have some temporary solution with one of the existing tools, uh, but it's not in the mainstream tools, let's say. Any more questions? Thank you. That's really interesting as a tool. Um, one question regarding the data collection for the establishing of the baselines. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you need to like restart the execution of a test or uh, some program that you want to find out the performance of to like reduce or remove the differences due to the test environment. Sometimes you know there is like the operating system is tends to be busy, other yeah. tasks in the ground, etc. How does Perun cope with that? Yeah, so if I understood the question correctly, you mean that you want to perhaps get rid of some older profiles? That no, no, for example, I, I, taking the example of CPython, okay. you run on a good known version and you took the baseline of, out of that. That will give you some like metrics on the performance of that. But sometimes when you run this kind of performance testing, you mm -hmm. get you know some deviation or problems due to the environment where the tool is running on. Yeah. And sometimes you want to like remove those differences and in to get right true data from your input without yeah. regardless of the operating system environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's something you can not always, but usually solve by repeating the profiling process, right? So uh, Perun actually supports you running the inputs multiple times, right? So you run the same workload 10 times, and you, let's say, throw away the first two runs because they might be biased, your cache is not uh, initialized properly and so on. So you can actually repeat the tasks you give to Perun. So you s let's say you have 10 inputs, you say, let's, let's run those, those, uh, those 10 inputs 10 times, let's get rid of the first two and let's see how the remaining eight were performing. So this is the, th this is the approach we've taken to this problem. So, so you can keep multiple instead of just one. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Nice, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I think we have time for one, maybe two short questions. Anyone? Uh, hi, uh, how do you create the profiles? Do you have to like manually set up some functions and inputs or? Yeah, so, so you're asking how we actually do the profiling itself, the, the process of collecting the performance data, right? If I understood it. Yes, yes. Okay, so currently we have a profiler based on a system tab and BPF, which is basically uh, hooking to your binary executable and monitoring the functions and how long they take. It's 
sometimes not as efficient as we would like to. So we also have some profilers that basically operate or instrument your program during the compilation, right? So when you compile your program, it adds some instrumentation code and it takes notes of how long your functions took and then basically assembles the final profile, the, the, the uh, resulting file that contains all those records. So you have to run your project yourself or run some tests? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So yeah, profiling is, is basically a dynamic analysis, so you have to supply the inputs. But we also, as I mentioned right at the end, we do support some external tools which are working statically, right? So Facebook Infer and uh, Lupus, they perform static analysis of your code and they can report the, uh, the derived or the inferred complexity of your function. So you actually don't have to run the program, but you are limited by what static analysis can do for you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you for that question. That was my question I wanted to ask. So, <laughs> But um, maybe one extra question for you. Um, I'm not sure if you mentioned it, but um, just to give me an idea how much time is needed for the profiling, creating the model, in case of the C Python bug, okay, like yeah. some time frame for that? Yeah, so measuring the benchmark, uh, I, I believe we were doing like uh, five to 10 runs of the benchmark. It's around 10 minutes, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which is quite a lot if you compare it to the original run, right? But also Python is quite a big uh, project with thousands of functions, so it, it definitely, the overhead of profiling definitely shows up. And as for the models, uh, this is usually in, in, let's say, tens of seconds, usually, for, for the project of, of CPython size. Okay, unfortunately, we are out of time. So if you have more questions, I'm sure Jirka will be happy to answer them in Definitely. the hall. So thank you. Please, one more round of applause for Jirka. Thank you.